Hi everybody, welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thanks for joining me on a crisp autumn morning in Statesville, North Carolina. So why am I playing the Mountain Dulcimer National Anthem, Wild Em Cabbage Down? Well, because it's an easy song. Most of you know it out there. It's one of the first songs we tend to learn on this instrument. And it's a great way of showing you how to put a little extra groove or bounce into your music. So what I'm using is basically accents. I'm playing some of the beats a little bit louder than some of the other beats. Let's start off with four quarter notes in a row and just strum them all the same volume like this. Here we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All four quarter notes are being played the same volume. And so, in 4-4 four, four time, as we're using our strum, we're playing a tune like Wild M. Cabbage down at a tempo of, say, one, two, three, four, playing all of the quarter notes the same volume, then you're going to get a tune that sounds like Wild M. Cabbage, very, very normal, like this. So I gave one strum per melody note and no extra fill-in strum so you can very, very clearly hear the melody and how it moves. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little extra emphasis on my strums on beats two and four. And that's going to sound like this. Instead of going all four quarter notes, all the same volume, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? I'm going to play beats two and four a little bit louder to put emphasis on them or to accent them, like shining a spotlight on those beats. Watch this. Two and four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 So you can hear there's a little bit of a different groove a little bit of a different vibe going on, and what's all that about? Basically, that accent on two and four, see what I'm doing? I'm like starting to move in my, in my shoes here, and maybe you're moving a bit too. Let me take the accent out. Isn't it like a calm lake? It's like really, really mellow. There's nothing directing you to move one way or the other. So let me try something a little bit different. Let me put accents on beats one and three. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well, you know, that doesn't feel like dancing anymore. It feels like marching, right? Left, right, left. So let's go back to all four the same. And now let's put the accents back on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Isn't that cool? The groove is back. The bounce is there. What is the difference between no accents, accents on a one and three, and accents on two and four? Well, when it comes down to accents on two and four, it sounds a lot like when you've got maybe a drum player. You got a kick drum. And then you got a snare. Boom, ta, boom, ta, boom, ta, boom, ta. If the kick is on beats one and three, then the snare would come on beats two and four. So what we're responding to is the crack of the snare or whatever is acting as the snare. Hand claps, side snares, wood blocks, whatever it is, it's that boom, pa, pa, pa. Now it's not really an afterbeat. We typically call eighth notes the second of a pair of eighth notes an afterbeat, or something that is on a weak beat. But this is actually on beats two and four. So it's not really an afterbeat, but it is coming after beats one and three. And it's that place in the lineup that gives us that sensation of kick, snare, kick, snare. And because we are so used to hearing drums in our music, it sort of works out. 
So it's not really playing the drums, but it's playing the essence, that feeling of having that drum there. So let me play boiled in cabbage with no accents, and then I'll play boiled in cabbage with the accents, and you can hear that groove come in a little bit here. Here's straight. Now with accents on two and four. All right, so you hear it's got a little bit more of a make you want to move in your seat kind of a move, doesn't it? That accent on two and four. Now I actually had to add in an extra strum because at one point in Boiled In Cabbage Down we have two half notes and one, two, three, four, that encapsulates, that covers that accent. We wouldn't have been able to hear it if I didn't do something. So I came over on the bass string and played another quarter note there. So it was... Now I was playing a counterpoint against the melody on the melody string, and that's another way of adding some groove into your music along with your accents. Two and four is while the melody is sustaining, usually two beats or more, that's a good time to come over and do a fill-in strum or just one beat, just one note by itself, a quarter note, an eighth note, on the bass string or on the middle string, any string but the melody string, so we don't chop up the melody and add too many notes. So accents on two and four, and do a little fill-in strum if you need to, if the beat's been hanging out for a couple of beats. Now let's go ahead and see what happens with boiled in cabbage now. One, two, three, four. How groovy is that? This works for any piece of music. Um, I could do Soldier's Joy. This is Soldier's Joy with no accents on two and four. And Soldier's Joy now with accents. So I'm really just getting in the habit of coming in and adding a little bit of a louder push, a louder strum on accents or on beats, two and four. How about, oh, let's see, Booth Shot Lincoln. There's a lot more syncopation in that, but I can still find two, find four, and play them just a little bit louder. And that, once again, is standing in for maybe a drum kit of some sort, a small drum kit, or that snare coming in on two and four. So why did it feel like dancing when we were doing accents on one and three? Because it feels too much like marching. So sometimes there's a time to march, other times you simply want to dance. So if you're hanging out and you're grooving, clap on two and four. If you're marching, clap on one and three. Or if you're doing the bridge to uh, Brother Can You Spare a Dime. That's for another workshop and episode all together. Hopefully this will help you get groovy in the jam and when you're playing your favorite tunes. Thanks everybody for tuning in. If you got suggestions for things you'd like to see on Dulce America, send me an email, bingfutch at yahoo.com. And I'll be happy to put them up here and show you what this little instrument can do. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.